Hi and welcome to a quick tutorial of mine. I just finished building this constant current LED tester today and I just wanted to show you what it does and how you can build one yourself. It's really quite easy. First off, a little bit of explanation. LEDs are always powered by current, not by voltage. So if you apply them in a circuit and you have a resistor, for example you have a 5 volt voltage source and you want to power the LED, you're going to put a series resistor in there. The series resistor is designed not to set the voltage across the diode, but to limit the current that flows through the diode. Now when you're testing LEDs that you don't know the specs of, this fact is a bit annoying. Because if you compare, for example, a low current red LED which takes 2 milliamps and has a forward voltage of about 2 volts to a white LED which takes maybe 30 milliamps and has a forward voltage of 4 volts or something, you'll notice that you'll have to vary the series resistor greatly in order to always hit the right spot for the LED. Therefore, having a constant current source is much easier. And this is exactly what this device is. It's basically six separate constant current sources <coughs> ranging over 2, 5, 10, 20, 40 and 80 milliamps. And it allows me to just test LEDs by um, placing them in the appropriate spot. Usually you will want to start from the lowest range, 2 milliamps, so I can place the LED here and you will see it light up. Um, some LEDs, for example, this one, it's clear. I cannot tell the color just by looking at the LED itself. So again, I'll just place it in here. Ah, I'll see it's a red one. And now I can vary the current by just placing it in the appropriate spot until I hit the right one. This, is, uh, this comes in quite handy um, if you really uh, have no idea what your LEDs are. For example, as you might have noticed from my other videos, I like scrapping stuff and there is a lot of parts among there uh, where you don't have any specs. The circuit in there is really easy. It consists only of uh, two trans transistors, one resistor and a, a potentiometer. Um, per stage and I'm going to show you exactly how I built that and how you can do your own. So looking at the back side you'll notice that the DC voltage source comes in here. It's a 6 volt power supply that I got off some device that I scrapped and the circuit is here and you'll notice that there are six identical circuits on here all of which consists of two transistors. I used BC547 five, uh, for that, or BC548, I think. Um, always potentiometers. This one is a 470 ohm. All the others are 100 ohms. And one 4.7K resistor. So it's a really, really simple circuit which allows you basically to build a constant current source. On the back side, you can also see that there is not a lot of wiring going on. Basically, through the layout, uh, which if you choose it smart, um, you can just uh, use solder bridges to connect the wires which need to be connected. So if you look at the circuit, you'll see that we have our power supply here and here. This is, let's say, plus 6 volts. We have our LED here. We have a 4.7K resistor here. And we have a NPN transistor here. And this is a resistor R1. Now, this circuit is not complete yet. If you just look at this circuit, um, you will see that basically the transistor will be turned on com continuously because of the 4.7K pull-up and the LED, or there will be a current running through the LED which is limited by R1. This is not a constant current source yet because the current that flows this path here also depends on the LED itself. So therefore we will augment the circuit by a second transistor and the second transistor will be in here, will be connected here, be connected above R1 and this will also be connected to ground. And now our circuit is complete. Now what this does is 
the voltage that is dropped across R1 is completely, um, completely linear with the current that flows down this path. So the more current flows here, the more voltage drops across R1. You'll see that the first one, uh, the first node of R1 is ground, so zero volts. Therefore, the voltage which drops across here, or the voltage at this node, is actually rising linearly with the current that, flowing, that is flowing down this path. So what happens here is the more current flows here, the higher the voltage at this point. This point is connected to the base of our second NPN transistor, which means that the more current flows down here, the more turned on this transistor will be. And if this transistor turns on, it will basically shut off the second transistor. It will divert um, current down this path and it will basically decrease the voltage for the base of this one. So this is basically a negative feedback loop. The more current flows down here, um, the more turned on this one will get and the less turned on this one will get. And so basically the current is constant across uh, the voltage here or the resistance here. Now the rule by which you can approximate the current which will flow down this path and if I say current, I always mean short circuit current. So if you imagine you just short, put a short in here, what current will flow? Um, you can determine that by calculating I is 0.7 volts over R1. So the current you, you will have down here is 0.7 volts over the resistance that you place in here. And now in my circuit, you'll notice that I put potentiometers down here so I can adjust it. So with this equation, you can obviously play around. If you, for example, pick a um, 47 ohm resistor, you can just calculate uh, the current that will flow by placing the values in the equation. And you can just use a calculator to calculate that and you will see that the current will be approximately 15 milliamps. So that is 0 0.015 amps. Obviously you want to solve this equation for R if you have a constant current source because you give the current and you want to know what resistor you need to put in. For this you can basically just solve for R and it's also very easy. It's 0.7 volts over I. Given a current I, let's say I would like to have 20 milliamps. This will give me an R of 0.7 volts over 20 milliamps. Again, putting the values in the calculator, 0.7 divided by 20 milliamps equals 35 ohms. When you put your circuit together, the only thing you'll have to pay attention to basically is that you wire up the transistor correctly. Again, I said this is an NPN switching transistor and you'll have the base here, collector here, emitter here. In Europe, um, the BC series of transistors is pretty common, so I think I used a BC548, also the BC547 will work equally as well, or the BC337. Basically, this constant current circuit uh, works over a wide r a range of transistors, it's just no special properties are needed here. The BC series is a bit uncommon, or is very common in Europe, but is uh, not so common in the US. So, in the US, the two ends are more common, and the 3904 is uh, probably what you want to use in here. So, any of these will work fine. So, if you have finished your circuit before connecting it up to any LEDs, you will want to calibrate and/or check that the currents that are on the stages um, really work as you expect them to 
and that you can very easily do by using a multimeter in its current mode as I am doing here and I will just measure each stage. This here is the 2 milliamp stage, this here is the 5 milliamp stage, 10 milliamp stage, this here is the 20, 40, and the 80 milliamp stage. And you will see those values all are pretty much spot on. So say you have a LED in your testing equipment and the brightness is sufficient so you will want to use that LED and in this case I'll want to power the LED up with 10 milliamps and you will not want a constant current source but you will want to calculate a forward resistor uh, for um, that LED then what you want to do is well you first memorize it's a 10 milliamp uh, you know that is constant and you can just measure the voltage drop across the LED in this case 1.49 volts and you can use that in your calculation to uh, find the correct dimension of a series resistor in your circuit. Okay, I hope you like the description and can build one of those LED testers yourself. Thank you for watching. Bye!